Hello, let us learn about inheritance and let's see what we have in this lecture. So we're going to learn about, well, what inheritance is, what it is all about, and we also need to look at its importance. Why is it important? Why are we learning it? And thereafter we shall look at uh, its disadvantages, okay? Um, what are its limitations? And we shall proceed to look at um, the syntax for how we can implement it in C++, okay? And finally, I'll give a demo. All right, so what is inheritance? Uh, inheritance is a process by which new classes are created. We don't create them from scratch, but we create them from classes which are already existing. So what that means is it enables existing classes to be reused. We can use them in other blocks of code. And that means existing classes can be extended without uh, modifying them. And what this means is that we're going to end up with a hierarchical relationship between um, superclasses and subclasses. Okay, so a new extended class is called a derived class or a child class. And the class from which it is derived, it's called a base class. Uh, you can also call it parent class or super class. So usually we would say it like the derived class is inherited from the base class. Okay, so that means the child class inherits the properties of its parent class. Now, during inheritance, the data members of the base class uh, get copied in the derived class and can be accessed depending upon the visibility mode used. Okay, now, this lecture is in two parts and certain details will cover them in part two of inheritance. And what we're going to show you in this uh, part is uh, basically how to implement inheritance but you need to know that inheritance comes in different types, but this is an introduction lecture. It's the first part of the lecture. Now, why is inheritance important? Number one, code reusability. So, uh, you see, if we were to be creating separate functions for classes which are actually similar, that will create data redundancy and it actually increases error rates, okay? And, well, another benefit is uh, the transitive nature of inheritance, and that increases productivity when coding. What this means is if there is an error, when bugs are removed from a base class, for example, it means all the inherited classes also automatically get debugged, okay? So whatever errors we're showing in the child class, when we um, debug the, the parent class, well, that debugging also applies to the uh, uh, to the derived classes. The other thing borders on security. Base class can decide to keep some data private. Uh, this protects the data from being altered by the derived class. And we'll learn more about this, especially as we move on in, into the second part. But for today, let's look at this first part. The other benefit is the cost effectiveness that comes with uh, using uh, inheritance. Uh, you know, if uh, certain uh, base classes are defined and then these other classes are simply inheriting certain features from the super classes, what that means is um, maintenance costs of a program are reduced. You don't have to change one item in a block of code. Again, you move on to another class. Again, you need to change this and fix that. So certain things are really done once and for all and then all the derived classes enjoy the benefit of that. Well, it also saves time because um, you don't need to write same lines of code over and over and over again, but you can instead reuse them, okay, by simply enabling the classes to inherit what was defined in the parent class. Well, there are also limitations. Uh, we also have some demerits. And the first one I want to mention is that inheritance de decreases execution speed of a program due to increased time and effort. It takes for it to jump through all the levels of overloaded classes. If you don't know about the concept of overloading a function, you need to listen to the lecture on overloading. Okay. Now, base and derived class are tightly coupled. Now, you see, um, 
one of the goals of designing information systems is to make systems to be loosely coupled. Loosely coupled means two systems are not overly dependent on each other, in so much that when what affects this component affects the other. But well, because of inheritance, we have to suffer that disadvantage, and that means base and derived classes are tightly coupled. Okay, so if uh, a superclass has a certain error, well, it goes without saying that uh, the derived class also suffers from that disadvantage. And so what this means is one cannot be used, one class cannot be used independently of the other. Another limitation is that changes made to parent class automatically affects behavior of uh, the child class. Okay, so this can be a benefit, it can also be a disadvantage in some cases. And the overuse of uh, inheritance, the overuse of inheritance makes a program complex. Well, in programming, usually we want to make things as simple as possible. But well, if you're using inheritance and then you overuse it, well, the program is going to become complicated. Okay, now here is the syntax of how to define, um, uh, how, how to implement inheritance. What you have here is a class, okay, let's quote, uh, I mean, we create a base class, and so we define it here, and then when um, defining a derived class, uh, you define it here, you write class, and the name of that derived class, then you put full colon, and then you write the name of the class from where it is getting derived, in this case, um, it's the base class, so you can see the name here is the same one here. And then here you need to declare, is it public, is it private? So in this case, uh, visibility mode, for example, the example I'm going to give you, we we'll use public here. Okay, so what is next? Uh, we want to do a demo, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a base class. It's going to have the following fields, uh, uh, employment number, employment name, department name. Now our assumption here is that this organization has employees, some who are on full-time, others who are on uh, part-time. So you notice that if we're going to have that situation, if we're going to have a part-time employee, we still need to keep details about their employment number, employment name, and the name of the department they belong to, but there, there are going to be certain fields which won't be common to the other classes, for example, hourly rate. That part-time employee, we are going uh, to, uh, he or she is going to have a field of hourly rate because their payment is based on the number of hours they work and that may not apply to a full-time worker. Likewise, if uh, we have uh, a full-time worker, a full-time worker can be entitled to leave, leave pay, which does not apply to uh, a part-time employee. So, but there are things which the, both these classes share and that is employment number, employment name and department name. So, um, the good thing here is if one is on part-time, we don't need to create a class which repeats these uh, properties here. So we we'll define these properties once and they can be used over and over again as long as a class is derived from the uh, superclass. Okay, so let's see how this can be done in C++. All right, so let us uh, write the code. So those are our um, header files, and the next thing is we need to define uh, the. We, we need to start with uh, defining the the base class, quite class employee. Okay, I'll declare its fields to be public. And that will be name, employee number, and department name. 
let's define a class which will be derived from this. Let's call it um, class part time employee. Okay. So this one will have a field for hourly rate. And then another class for a full-time employee. This one, let's just include float with pay. Okay, so that is what we have. Um, now remember what we said. Right now, as they are, they are just classes. We can't call them derived. For us to show, for example, that the part-time class is derived from employee, we need to write full colon then do that you put a full colon here and then you need to specify uh, that it's public and it's being extended from employee same thing here right so let us just uh, give one example of uh, the benefits that come with inheritance let us go into the int main function and let us create an object for part time let us call this object employee one Why is there a red highlight here showing an error? Well, we didn't include the curly brackets. This code has to be between those curly brackets. So now you observe that um, we want to we want a user to see in details of this uh, employee on part time. Now observe this. Let us just write some descriptive text, text here. We'll say enter. Um, okay, let's say enter name. And employment number. and hourly rate so to do that we'll say cn e1 now you'll notice here that in the part-time class I had only indicated hourly rate but now this object which has been created can access department name which is in the parent class okay so it is inheriting these fields which I did not specify here so enter name okay this will be the name of the employee We can also enter uh, what are the detail employment number, which is this one, 
and finally the hourly rate again e1 dot hourly rate here okay here we are so we can now see out now We can also see out the ID. Let's just call it employee ID. And finally, let us also put a caption for hourly rate okay so there we are let us try to implement this and see what it is going to give out okay so it's prompting me to enter the name i'll put andrew employment number that and hourly rate of okay so here we are it gives out these details so let me leave you with a task. I want you to uh, include more code to what I've shown you, but I want you to include code for a full-time employee. So the program should prompt you to enter details for a part-time uh, employee like I've done, but it should move on uh, to prompt you to enter for a full-time employee. Okay. So in the second part, we're going to look at uh, some more detailed concepts of inheritance. See you in the next lecture.